Born Pretty Store review and tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. And in this um, video, I'm also going to be featuring the new Sinful Colors Neon Collection, and I will post a link to that, um, to a review and stuff on the end of my video. So begin by painting your nails with all those bright, fabulous colors. And here is the stuff that I will be reviewing. And it came in just a regular old bu uh, bubble envelope, and then it came just like a business card. Um, I had Born Pretty Store's website and their information on it. So I've got a really teeny tiny acrylic brush, some water drop, water drop gems, that's kind of hard to say, and then in this little like foam wrap stuff, there was some orange wood sticks, and then these adorable little gems that have like a gold backing on them. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the, um, the mini acrylic brush, and it really is tiny, it is so small, which is wonderful for making little petals or really detailed work and it's got pink bristles which is kind of fun um the brush is really awesome i can't say enough good things about it the one thing that i consider a downfall is that it's got a plastic handle and the monomer can kind of eat up the plastic handle if you get any on it so metal is really a little bit better but that you know you just got to be careful so then the next thing i'm going to show you is those little gems that i mentioned that have the gold backing and so open up the little ziploc bag and i'm going to pour some out. these are super sparkly much more, they catch light much better than just ordinary gems, and so they really, really are gorgeous. Um, I think they're a little too thick for just doing it on natural nails, but if you do acrylic stuff, they're really cool for that, for sure. Alright, next on the list is those water drop gems. There, I said it right, haha. -ha. Um, they come in a wheel, and there is stars, um, little teardrop, or no, the petal shapes, squares and circles and there's three compartments of each of the shapes so there's 12 compartments total um, and they're really pretty they are kind of iridescent looking and I don't know I really like these I think they'll be a lot of fun and very versatile plus when you have the extra shapes like that there's some fun things that you can do with those I'm going to show you um, what the stars look like the stars are the only ones that are like this they're flat so normally when you get studs and gems they kind of have a dome shape but the stars are just completely flat. So if you don't like having the feel of like the gem, the little lump on your nail, these are really nice because they are flat and they'd be fairly smooth. Um, they're a little thick, as you can see, they're not like a sequence in thickness. They're a little thicker than that, probably like a millimeter or so. Maybe not that quite, no, half a millimeter. Anyways, so those are kind of fun. The rest of them do have that domed shape though. So then here's the orange wood sticks, and you can't really go wrong with orange wood sticks. They pretty much are what they are. Um, sometimes, though, if you get, like, the really super cheap ones, they kind of have little bits of wood that stick up and splinter. These don't. These are really nice and smooth, and they're all uniform. There's no knots in the wood or anything like that. None of them came broken, so that's always a benefit. And they've got a pointed end, and then they've got an end that's, like, um, just at an angle. And as you can see, if you take the end that's just at that angle, you can sort of remove dried on nail polish from your skin just by running it along and just sort of lifts it up off the skin for you. And I'll show you some other things you can do with orange wood sticks further on in the tutorial. So now we're going to begin with the ring nail and I'm going to be painting just some zebra print and you wouldn't have to do this. You know, this is just my preference. If you can tell by my channel name, I love zebra print. It's, I'm a big fan. Anyways, so this is how I paint zebra print pretty free and just whatever happens, happens. Um, that's the fun thing about zebra print. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. In fact, it kind of shouldn't be. It looks better if it's a little weird looking, which is good because weird looking is my specialty. <laughs> Anyways, so just continue painting the zebra print and I'm going to actually be doing zebra print on all my nails. So then on the ring nail, since I'm doing the 3D on there, I'm going to apply a layer of top coat and let that dry completely. If you don't let it dry completely, it's going to get kind of messed up. So then place a bead of yellow acrylic, and I'm going to use that new brush that I showed you in the beginning, and then I'm going to place one of those water drop gems with my orange wood stick. And then I'm going to continue with the petals going around the water drop gem. And so I'm going to place a little bead of acrylic and then sort of pat it out into a petal shape. And I'm actually going to do two for this first one just because, you know, you can sometimes do two and this way I can show you a different way. So then you can lift up the petals with your brush. Now, if you can't really lift them up, you can also use that orange wood stick on the flatter side. It works actually really well. Um, it's up to you. You can do it either way. So I'm going to show you two with the orange wood stick and I'm just going to do the rest with the brush. So you kind of want to lift those up and fold them almost around the water drop gem. Just so it looks like the petals are closing around it. 
So then continue going around. And if you don't know, if you didn't notice this, I am having a little bit of trouble with the acrylic releasing from the brush. That could simply be the fact that this is a new top coat that I haven't worked with before and it doesn't like the acrylic, or it could be the brush. I'm leaning towards the top coat though, so don't worry about that too much. So then I'm going to continue this whole process and I'm going to be doing, so I did three petals of yellow and I'm going to be doing three petals of white. And so I'm going to do a white petal in between each of the yellow. So then let those set for just long enough that they kind of begin to hold their shape and then fold them up. So you don't want to start folding them immediately after you press them out. Let them for, you know, 10 to 20 seconds, I guess. It depends on the acrylic you're using and the temperature in your house and all of that good details. And so now I'm going to go back to yellow and this time instead of just doing three, I'm going to be doing six and I'm going to start by doing the ones that are in between the white and then I'm going to go and add one behind each white petal. So as you can see, this brush that I'm using does a fabulous job of making really tiny petals. In fact, this is about as big as they can get. So if you're looking for a brush that's versatile and can make larger petals and smaller petals, this probably isn't the one. But if you want one that does a really good job at making really tiny, tiny petals, or like I said, if you're doing all their detailed stuff, this is great. Because I know I've got one that's a little bit bigger and making petals this size would have been difficult. But with this one, it's really super easy and it does the job very well. Another thing, what I'm doing with this brush, like sliding it underneath the petals, is kind of hard on your acrylic brushes and this one is holding up really well. So that's good. And once you got that flower the size that you want, I'm going to be placing a white bead um, for a leaf just sort of below it and then press it out into a leaf shape and then take an orange wood stick that is dipped into clear or white acrylic and then you can sort of make the little veins of the leaf and I'm just going to repoint the tip of the leaf so that it's back to that shape because the pressing into it with the orange wood stick can kind of morph the shape and make that point a little less pointy so you can just fix that with the brush again once you've got the veins in there. So I'm going to add three of the water drop gems up above by my cuticle just to sort of balance out the nail. That one was fighting with me. There we go. And now highlight your petals on your flower. This is optional. I like to do this just because it makes the whole thing look a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to do the very edge of each of the petals. I'm going to start with the white ones and use full strength white paint to highlight the little edges of the petals. And then on the yellow ones that I made, I'm going to do them with watered down white paint just so that it still shows some of the yellow color through. And I'm going to be painting over the leaves, so I'm going to leave the little divots where I used the orange wood stick, but fill in all of the solid sections of the leaf. So then as I mentioned, highlight your yellow, your yellow petals with watered down white. So when I water down white, I just dip my brush in water after I've got paint on the bristles. So then on your pointer, middle, pinky, and thumb, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be painting zebra print, but I'm not just going to be painting plain zebra print like you always see. I'm going to first outline my nail. And if you haven't ever used an outline before and you're a little scared to because it's kind of a perfected thing, um, this is a good way to start to try it out because it doesn't need to be perfect because the zebra print sort of masks any problems. So then if you're um, working on your thumb, then we're going to be painting a five petal flower, just your simple basic flower. And I'm going to do the first one up in the corner of my nail and I'm going to add two smaller ones off to the side. And the one um, flower doesn't, the whole thing doesn't fit on my nail, so it's a partial flower. Inside each of those petals, I'm going to add a smaller pink one. And then I'm going to add one of those little gems in the center of the largest flower. And again, I'm using my orange wood stick to place it. And of course, add a layer of top coat. And I'm going to first apply glossy top coat to all of the nails. And I'm going to go around the 3D art um, on my ring nail. And I'm going to make sure that I really cover up those gems so that they have 
I'm just gonna let that they stay on the nail really long and I'm gonna cover the rose with matte top coat careful not to cover up any of the gems because they'll lose some of their shine and thank you so much for watching I hope you like this review and tutorial I will put the links and a 10% off discount code in the description box and I will see you in my next video bye